Coming up on Hands on iOS, I am going to show you how you can control your Apple TV using your iPhone and your Apple Watch. Hands on iOS is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether their employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. If you have an Apple TV, then chances are you have used this remote. This is the Siri remote, and it is, um, you know, a well-known remote that is in many cases kind of uh, universally panned, I would say, for being a not-so-great remote. It's not too great to hold in the hand. It's a little uh, lightweight. It's made of glass, which can easily shatter. Uh, there are all these concerns and considerations about the Apple TV remote that make it not great for doing the thing that it's meant to do. So what happens if you lose your Apple TV remote or if you'd rather just tuck it away and use something else? Well, of course, you can get a universal remote. That would work. But it turns out if you also have an iPhone or an Apple Watch, you've got a remote built right into your device. And so let's talk about how you can set up your iPhone first and your Apple Watch to work with an Apple TV. So we will go over to the remote app. This is a free app you can download from the App Store. And we'll tap on that and you will see that there are two Apple TVs that are available to be, to be connected to. The one that I wanna to connect to is Dayton. So I'll tap on Dayton and it will load, think about itself for a second, and it pops up a code, uh, or a place rather to enter a code. So the goal here is to enter the code that shows up on your Apple TV. This means that it can tell that you indeed are the one that's trying to do the pairing process. So we'll hop over to the Apple TV, and you can see there's the code that I wanna type in, one, four, zero, three. When I type in that code, the Apple TV says, okay, it's cool, that's fine, you wanna uh, use the Apple TV, we're good. I can go back to my phone now, and you can see it shows here, not only is the Apple TV remote a separate app, but it's also available in Control Center. So I'll tap OK, and then now, using these buttons, I can control the actual Apple TV. So I'm gonna switch back to uh, the Apple TV app, and as I swipe around on my iPhone, I am actually able to see and control the Apple TV using my remote, my phone rather. And what's super cool about this too is that it is just like the Siri remote in the sense that you have on this screen your play pause controls, your go back to home button, your menu button, and Siri, activating Siri using that speaker. So if I were to tap that microphone, then I can go ahead and say play a movie you think I'd like or play a movie that features this actor and just like Siri on the Apple TV Siri remote it would do that thing for you super simple to get it set up on your iPhone so how do you do it on your Apple watch well it turns out it works almost the same so what we'll do is we will head over to the Apple watch I've got a little Apple watch camera set up here so here I've got my Apple Watch and I want to launch the remote app. I will scroll down. I've already installed this, but you of course uh, can get it as well. And we get down to remote. I go ahead and tap on remote and it's going to try to connect to the Apple TV I already have set up with it. So that process happens and it says, oh, I couldn't connect with that Apple TV. Uh, that actually is kind of a bug because it does that almost every time. And then it connects just fine. But Estevale is an Apple TV I've already connected to. What I want to connect to is Dayton. So I'll tap on Dayton. And then it's going to say, well, there's a code. So we once again go back to the Apple TV. And the code is 7213. After I type in that code, then I've got access. The entire surface becomes your swiping surface. Swiping left and right and around on that will let you control your Apple TV. Hitting the menu button will, of course, let you go back, and hitting the, hitting the play pause button will let you go forward. So some of the controls, but not all of them, are available on the Apple Watch remote. But if you are about to you know, walk away from the TV and you forgot to hit pause, you can just pull up your iPhone and do it right quick. It's very handy. 
There are different reasons that you might run into trouble gaining access to your Apple TV, actually having it show up for you and uh, having it appear within the remote app. And there are some things that you need to know. On your iPhone and on your Apple TV, you need to make sure that you are logged into the proper iCloud account. So if on my iPhone I'm logged into my account, then I'm going to want to be logged in to that same account on my Apple TV. After that, you need to make sure that both of the devices are on the same Wi-Fi network. That is incredibly important. With both devices on the same Wi-Fi network, they're able to see each other, and through that, you are able to control them. What happens if you want to stop using uh, a, an iPhone or an Apple Watch with a certain Apple TV? Well, there is a setting for that. If we go to the Apple TV, and we go ahead and look until we find the settings app. We tap on settings. We scroll down until we get to remotes and devices. And then we scroll down until we get to remote app and devices. And then we choose, in this case, the iPhone. And we choose unpair device. We can also choose Sutton and choose unpair device. By doing that, it will undo the pairing process that you had in place, and it will let you uh, then choose to pair new iPhones or completely remove those iPhones if you so choose. So it's very easy to do uh, when you are trying to connect or disconnect an iPhone that wants to control your Apple TV. I think this is a very handy feature because, again, sometimes you just can't find the pesky Apple TV Siri remote. It's lost or it's, uh, I don't know, uncomfortable in your hand, whatever it happens to be, whatever excuse you have for not wanting to use this Siri remote. You don't have to explain it to me. I totally understand. Instead, use your Apple Watch or your iPhone, which are both excellent devices for controlling your Apple TV. Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of Hands on iOS. I do appreciate it every time. Of course, go ahead and uh, leave a, a thumbs up here on the video if you're watching it on YouTube. And be sure to subscribe if you are watching it somewhere else and you want to subscribe on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash HOI. If you have questions or thoughts for future topics, hands on iOS at twit.tv. And of course, be sure to subscribe to the show in either audio or video formats. We've got it on all the places by heading to twit.tv slash HOI. Thanks so much. And we'll catch you next time on Hands on iOS. I'm Jason Howell, host of Tech News Weekly here on twit.tv, along with my co-host, Micah Sargent. Each and every week, we talk to people who are making and breaking the tech news. It could be journalists writing amazing tech stories. It could be experts. It could be the sources of the stories themselves, developers, you name it. We bring them onto the show and we talk to them about why their story is resonating with the world. You can watch and subscribe by going to twit.tv slash TNW. Make sure you do that. And you won't miss a single episode. We'll see you there.